Operation Market Garden. The Allies attempt to end the war by Christmas by dropping a carpet of paratroopers all the way down Hell's Highway, some 60 miles plus to Arnhem, uh, to rescue the British paratroopers, cross the bridges, get into Germany, end the war by Christmas. Hi, this is Paul with the Oka Knight. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at Holland 44 by Mark Simonich to uh, play some turns and uh, learn some things about how it works. Uh, maybe we'll get through the short campaign, maybe we won't. We'll see how far we can get. Before we get too far, I'd like to just give a brief overview of the map area which we have to operate in. We begin our tour over here by the 30th car, which is in this area here, begins over here on the other side of the canal. Uh, and they are restricted to this area running from about over here to about over here, down this alleyway, running all the way to Eindhoven. Um, they will, where they will meet up with the 101st Airborne, which is going to be dropping over in this area. Uh, on turn one, the 101st, their job is to capture as many of these bridges as they possibly can to pave the way for the 30th Corps as it comes through. Now, in this game, bridges are everything. Bridges are so important. Uh, the Germans are allowed to blow bridges, uh, to attempt to blow bridges simply with the Allies when they move against, uh, when they move adjacent to the bridge. There's a die roll for blowing the bridge. There's a modifier for turn one, so you have your best shot at capturing bridges on turn one. Uh, as we continue down Hell's Highway, we run into kind of an openish area, which is good. They should get through this area fairly quickly. But uh, if they, hopefully they've captured the Grave River Bridge. There's some advantages the Allies have for the Grave River Bridge. It's not, it, it's not guaranteed that they'll capture it, but uh, the game makes it likely that they will. The Germans are not allowed to blow the bridge on turn one. Uh, as we get over to Eindhoven, we pass responsibility over to the 82nd Airborne, which is going to drop over in, uh, in this area here by Grosbeck. Uh, historically, uh, the, the 82nd uh, was very reluctant to send troops initially over to Nijmegen. They were much more concerned about the, uh, the possibility of German armor and other troops popping out of this forest here on the board edge. Uh, and as you can see, as you can see, this is actually Germany. So uh, the Germans are getting close to fighting for their home ground. They were concerned about that. Uh, and as a result, they were kind of slow sending guys over to capture Nijmegen. If you look around YouTube, you'll see the uh, theories for what uh, caused the defeat in the in this in Market Garden for the Allies. And one of them is that the uh, one of the theories is that the Americans were just too slow trying to get the Nijmegen Bridge. They didn't have it before 30th Corps actually got there. As once we finally do get over Nijmegen Bridge, you can see the terrain just turns into utter crap. Uh, we have this, this terrain called Poulter, which is basically a peat bog trampoline. Uh, it's strong enough to support a person. You can jump up and down on it and you'll feel it squish under your feet, but it's, you can't drive a tank on it. Um, once we get over to Arnhem and we have the historic issues there where the where the drop zones were too far away from uh, the Arnhem Bridge uh, and, uh, and it caused no end to problems. We only had, there was only one battalion that made it, Colonel Frost Battalion. Uh, and uh, well, you see, if you've seen the, uh, the movie A Bridge Too Far, as you probably have, uh, you understand what he went through. Okay. Heading back to Eindhoven, if we go east, we're going to see the terrain starting to close in on the Allies. Uh, they have a canal that needs to be crossed. They have a victory city to, to reward them if they do. And if we continue farther south, we're going to, or farther east, we're going to see even more. There's two more victory cities that they can get to, but it's not going to be easy. We have nothing but crap terrain. Uh, we have more victory cities down here, two of them. Uh, which can also help the Allies should they manage to get there. Here are the results of our uh, airdrops. You notice that two of them were, had no effect. A one through four does nothing. And a six will go ahead and cause one temporary casualty. It'll put a one unit on its reduced side and uh, have a scattered result in addition. 
Uh, the loss will actually come back. It can be taken as a replacement later on uh, as, uh, as an action for the unit. So the loss is not permanent. Now we'll go ahead and do the other units so that you can see what happened and I'll, I'll give you a summary once it's all done. All right, with the 101st, in addition to the, one, the unit to the left that took a scattered with a, a one point uh, loss, we took a simple scatter result on a, on a second unit of the 101st. If we go down here on the 82nd, this one's a little unfortunate because uh, it's one of the units that could be trying to secure the Grave River Bridge, but I think we'll have some help here. I think we can get through this. This, is, this should be manageable. Uh, and then one took a loss with a, not spent, I'm sorry, it is a scattered, other side of the counter. So he's got, took a temporary loss and he, uh, one unit is going to be scattered. And then we took one unit with a scattered without any loss over here with the first pair, the British. Uh, that's not too bad. Could be worse, could be better, but uh, it's certainly something we can deal with. All right, now we're going to go on to the first movement phase for the Allies. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is to just um, uh, do the movements uh, on record and report on the results, although I may pop in with uh, recordings of particularly interesting things. I'll give you an example of what's not interesting, the 30th Corps. Basically, they're all jammed up. They're not going anywhere. They're going to be attacking. They got some bonuses on the first turn to blast through this. And uh, beyond that, there's not going to be much movement. Uh, the main movement is going to be the paratroopers scattering around to try to capture bridges. Remember, there's, there's a, there is a bonus uh, for capturing bridges on the first turn. It's the easiest turn to do it. Normally, it's one chance in three of, of success. And the first turn, it's one chance in two. So that's a good thing. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I think on the first turn is particularly important. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of these moves because uh, they, they really set the stage for what happens next. Uh, so we're going to start with the 101st. If you remember, uh, one of them had been scattered and, and took a hit. Uh, I put that underneath. It can, it can still do some things, but it's certainly, it's, it's basically operating at half, of, half effect. So we're going to let that guy rest a minute and we're going to do something else. I think what we're going to do here is start with this 453. And that red around the 5, excuse me, means he's elite. So he's going to be getting, he is going to be getting a shift in his favor once he, uh, once he gets ramped up on somebody. Uh, you see, the question mark units, they could be nothing, they could be something. We don't know what they are. Uh, but, so, but we're going to go find out. And one of the ways to do that is during the move. So we're going to, uh, this is a non-mechanized unit. It is a, a non-mechanized unit. It has a, a, a movement of, uh, of one through the woods. So he's just going to go one, and then here, jump on top of this guy and see who he is. And he is a zero, zero, zero. So he's a simple garrison, okay? Now, a simple garrison is, uh, is, he just picks up off the map. However, however, we do get to try to blow the bridge. So on a one, two, three, uh, the, the, blowing, uh, the bridge blow is successful. A four, five, six is, uh, is not successful. Up. Take, take it back. Uh, on a one, two, three, and that's with a minus one modifier for turn one, the bridge blow is not successful. The bridge is captured. Four, five, six, it blows. So let's see what we got. Oh, we got... A five. The bridge goes kabawi. That's going to be a problem uh, because the Sun River Bridge is one of those bridges. It's right on Hell's Highway. It's going to take some. Uh, they're going to they're going to have to get up the Bailey bridges to make this right again. Okay. So uh, the first the first bridge is blown. This guy's over here. He's kind of done. Uh, well, let's see if we can get a, a secondary bridge. There's another bridge over here. Let's see what we can do. Maybe we can get this one. One, two, three, the bridge is, is captured. And we got a three, this bridge is captured. Okay, so it's not quite on Hell's Highway, it's a little out of the way, but hey, it's gonna, it's gonna work. Uh, so we wanna mark this guy is captured. He's available for use. Uh, now let's go ahead and, and do some of these other guys. Uh, let's see. All right. I think we need to, 
scout out this thing. Here's a question mark guy. We want to find out who he is. So he's going to go one, two, see who he is. All right, it's something. All right. That means the unit pulls back to where it entered the hex. And what do we have? We have a four attack factor uh, hitting a two defense factor. Now this, uh, we start getting into what's, what's the classification of the various units. Uh, this defending unit is a, is a motorized unit, or excuse me, yeah, mechanized unit. Uh, and he is, he, but he's not an armor unit and he's not a tank. But he is mechanized, and if we look at our terrain table for what we have here, it is a town. Uh, let's see. Defender doubled except vehicle units is what we see. A, a, a town hex, uh, the defender's not doubled. So we have a, a four against a two. That's two to one, but we're not done there. We've got an elite four going against a, a, a regular two. So there's going to be a shift up. So we're looking at a four to two, shift up one, three to one on this hex. So answer, not bad that something good's going to happen for the allies. We roll our die. And we got a two. That is an exchange. All right, what is an exchange? An exchange means you get to pick a loss. Each side gets to pick a loss on the other side's guy. Now, this defender is only a one-step unit. He gets the guy who goes away. There's only one guy attacking. He takes the hit. Uh, in exchange results, if the hex is vacated, boom, the hex is captured. Okay, so it costs something, but the hex was taken. Next, uh, let's see. I like to do this when I move my units. It helps me a lot. Vassal's another deal, but this ain't Vassal. I don't get the movement tag, so we're going to do this. All right, we got over here, let me scooch. We've got one scattered result, and one guy's okay. Remember, only one guy in the in the in the stack of units that landed in that hex is affected on the first drop on the first day's drop so uh we're going to start here we go one and two over uh, two over the bridge and we're going to see what this guy is oh and when we walk into that bridge we're going to see if it blows it does not blow that bridge is available so if we get this hex that means that uh that means that this bridge is going to get captured very good thing. So now we have we would have something over the next uh, over the next water obstacle. It's a triple zero. It's nothing. Take the hex. All right, and we want to mark this bridge as taken. Um, all right, and I want to do my scooch next. Um, this guy. Now, in the first turn, the Germans are, are limited to what's called tactical movement. They can only move no more than two hexes, and pretty much movement costs are ignored. So they get a two hex move on turn one, which means these guys up here aren't really going to be doing much damage to anybody. And in particular, this guy with the black around his movement allowance, he doesn't move at all until somebody gets within a hex or two of him. So uh, he's kind of stuck there until the allies get up there. And there's nobody up here in the, in the side area zones that can come running onto the map. So we don't have a lot to worry about here as far as somebody doing something surprising. Uh, so we have options is what that, what that says. Um, and let's see one option is we can go for one two three we can go to that bridge we can come back here one two three we can't get to here uh so i don't know i'm going to opt for the conservative and we're going to go back three we're going to go next to that railroad bridge and we're going to see if it's captured one two three it is it is a three that bridge is captured all right so we got an alternative going over there. It's not on the road, even though it's next to the road. May not be too useful, but it could be very useful if this bridge is recaptured and blown. Uh, more bridges are better. Bridges are good. More bridges are better. All right. Next, we still have a couple units up here that haven't done anything. Um, 
All right, this unit can go too, may possibly cause us a little bit of grief, maybe not too much. Not in turn one anyway. Um, set here, okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that we may, maybe set a perimeter uh, and actually, uh, well that bridge is blown, but the one up there is not, so I'm thinking we need to go up by the bridge that's not blown so that we can get some guys over to the uh, Eindhoven. So we're going to go there, we're stop, we're running into a Zock, and it seems like we're not doing much, but we're going to establish a perimeter. One, I think that might be good enough for now. So we have kind of, we have some Zocks running along here. Now in this game, if you look at all the videos around there on this, and Normandy 44 and all that, there's a Zock bond, uh, uh, there's a Zock bond, uh, I don't know, mechanic, uh, which means to say this hex, this hex side is actually bound together. In this game, you got to have at least two steps. We do in each of these two hexes. There's a Zock bond here. No matter what, nothing's getting through there, pretty much. Uh, Zoc, otherwise, Zocks can you can do Zock to Zock movement in this game, but not through a Zock bond. All right, that would be the hundred and first. They are done. Uh, let's go over. Remember, this game has got a lot of little battles going on in the beginning, and for some time actually. So, what's our next mini battle? Okay, we're going to go over to the Grave River Bridge, which. Is an important one. Remember the movie? Okay. Uh, for the Grave River Bridge, what we got going here is that this bridge cannot be blown on turn one, but it certainly can on turn two and thereafter, so we want it. The scattered unit has only a half effect, and he took a loss anyway. Uh, he can only use tactical move. He can only go two hexes, so he could get there, but I got something else in mind. Okay. I'm going to take this four, five, three. He's going to go here. And, and no, 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 no. We're going to take our friend, such as he is. Four. Hmm. I take it all back. We're, the, the, second, the second thing you can do, the second you can go in and during movement, or you can go in during combat. Okay. I think these guys want to go in during combat, get them pull themselves together. It's unfortunate that the other guy was scattered, but that's okay. The guy that's scattered can still do tactical move. He's going to go one, two. He's going to get adjacent to a bridge, and he's going to see if he can capture it on a one, two, three. No, kabooey. It got blowed. So we're going to blow that bridge. Uh, let's see, where are we? Ah, okay. All right, down here. Uh, we have to establish some kind of perimeter. We have to do something. We have these more question mark guys. We don't know what they are. Uh, we've already uncovered two nothing burgers, so I have a feeling they're a something burger. Uh, for now, we're going to take one of these, go one two and boom and we're going to see who this dude is he's a two he's also an infantry class in the city so that two doubles to a four but the story doesn't end there we have an elite unit with the red five this is actually a low quality unit with a white round around his defense so it's a four to two, a four to two he's times two that's four one to one but we get a shift up for because we got all elites going in and we have a a shift another shift up because we only have these uh this uh uh non-elite or this excuse me this low quality unit defending so what well, we got a one to one plus two shifts up it would be a three to one i got a six all right that's a d1 what is a d1 well it's good is what it is that means he takes a step loss ba boom he just dies adios He's going to go in, and we get to see if the bridge blows or not. One, two, three. It's good. Ba-boom! This is what this game is about. You just don't know. You just don't know what the, what the strategic picture is going to be. 
uh, based on what bridges blow and which ones don't. Uh, that's just what the that's just what this campaign was all about. Okay, uh, now we got to go down here, and I think we got to send one guy, got to send one battalion in to see what's going on in Nymega. So one, two, three. We're gonna walk on top of this guy. He's a triple zero. So we've got a we've got a one hex of Nymegan, almost for free. Good thing. Uh, but we've got we have got uh, not a lot of units and a lot of spaces to defend because on the board edge, let's see if I can show it to you. Okay. On the board edge there are six units and they enter on turns one, two, or three. You roll for each one. On a one or two, the unit enters. So there's up to six units that's gonna enter over here. Uh, so we do ha have to pay attention to that possibility. Who knows, there could be a thousand Panzers in this part of Germany, is what Gavin was, concer was concerned about. Yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's, 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 let's take a fresh guy. Let's try to see what we can do with this other question mark. One, two, we're gonna jump on top of him, see what gives. All right, he's a one. He's not doubled in, that, in the trees, so it's four to one. But we're still elite, and he's still low quality. So four to one, six to one. Good odds. Let's see what happens. Six DS. Well, that's as just that's just as good as it gets. Uh, long story short, defender shattered. We don't need to go into the details because he just dies. He just dies. We're going to take this. We can go farther. I don't think we want to. Uh, Next, I think we want to uh, establish some kind of perimeter. We do have at least some kind of uh, Zox going on here, here, over here. We're kind of okay uh, in case we start getting some action with these random entries. I think we want to defend a little bit. So let us let's go two points over to here. Uh, boy. There's just not enough units here in the beginning, you know. Two. Two. Let's see. Enter the, a leg unit going through Poulter is two per hex. Uh, he gets three movement points. Now in this game, you get two extra movement points if you're not if you are not going at Jace, if you don't end against a, a, an enemy unit. Uh, but without that, he's only got three, so we could have a guy called one, two. We could have, oops, carry off camera. Let me try to fix this. There we go. Life is good. <laughs> we can go one, two, three, four, five with a guy with a three movement points because he gets those benefits of extra two if he doesn't go next to somebody. Uh, he can start in a Zoc, but he can't end in a Zoc, and he can't go through Zocs and stuff. Uh, all right, so how about two, two? A guy would go here and stop. Two, four, two, four. Uh, he's not getting it. So my concern is the headquarters unit here. For now, I think it's kind of okay. Uh, so I think for now, the uh, 82nd is done. Over to the British first para. Now this is where it's going to get interesting. Because there's all kind of screwy things can go on here. Essentially, Mr. Simonich put in some extra rules that, that make a historic result possible. And in particular, he put in what he, what's, what he calls an infiltration rule. And basically what that allows, there's, a, there's two parts to it. One is for trees, which I have not seen a use for yet. But the other is for city hexes, of which this is. So let's start with that. Uh, that will actually happen next term, but it's set up this term. All right, so here's Colonel Frost. Uh, is that Colonel Frost? No, that's, let's see, that's his brother. Uh, where's Colonel Frost? All right, that's Colonel Frost. So... Colonel Frost has got three movement points, but he's not going to go next to anybody, so he's going to take five movement points. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and he's going to end up over here. 
okay? Uh, now, he's going to end up next to the city. Zox don't extend into the city, and there's the infiltration rule that would let him, even once there's a bad guy, say, right here or right here, it won't stop him. He will get to get, he will get a full move through here. He will be able to hit this question mark unit, and if he defeats it, like we've seen the others get defeated, he's sitting on the Arnhem Bridge, just like he did historically. Now, for these other guys, it gets more interesting. Uh... I like the idea of, of sealing the, this part of the map with Zoc bonds. It keeps guys from showing up. So I think these two, this two-point unit, it would be interesting to go up there. I like that idea. Uh, the other thing is that it is possible to kill this unit. Now, in the in the rule book, uh, in the rule book, uh, it says that that uh, they recommend. Doing so, not allowing this, and it kind of confuses me because, you know, either it's a rule or it's not, and if it's not a rule, then why are you putting it in there? You know, at least make it an optional rule or something, but a non-rule rule that changes things like that is unusual to say the least. Uh, so my inclination is to go ahead and forget the non-rule rule where I think I think if it's something you take you're allowed to take a question mark unit and put another put it up here to possibly have a Zoc because what can have what's going to happen is I think we're going to be able to surround this guy uh, and we have a chance not guaranteed but a chance of just killing him uh, I don't know I mean it's where they are I see nothing wrong with it and it is the rules as written uh, all uh, all uh, you know, hesitations aside, based on what he said for what for a competitive play, they recommend this. Well, yeah, you know, it's a long game. I don't think it matters personally. So let's go ahead and forget that's even in the rule book, because it's, again, it's a non-rule rule. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with a non-rule rule. All right, let us go ahead and seal this. Well, here's what we need to do first. We need to go one, two, three. Four, five. Now there's a funky rule where after the th uh, beginning with the third woods hex you go into, it costs two instead of one. So that's why it costs five to get there. The reason why that's important is we've got Zox now too deep. You got to have Zox too deep to kill a guy, otherwise because he can retreat through one Zox. But now we got Zox here, 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 and we're going to have Zox around him. This guy can die now, and that's what we're going to try to do. In the meantime, we have to protect. This is where the next day's para drops are going to happen. It's be a good idea to hold that so that our units come in. I like that idea, so we got to do that. Um, one, two, three. I think in general, you kind of have to give up on on not, uh, on having it so that he can't. The Germans can't even get a Zach next to the place. One, two, three, next to the drop zone. Uh, you just don't have the units. Uh, but at least you have a good chance of getting them down. They may get banged up a bit, but one, two, three. Okay, so now we have, if you look, we have Zachbond here between these units, Zachbond on the hex side, Zachbond here. We're not going to have Germans coming in behind us at least. Now we have to finish this off. I think we put our weak units here. It's just a question mark unit. I'm not going to worry about what that is. And I think we put another weaker unit. One, two. We just stick them down here. That's a ferry. That's probably a good thing to have. I like that idea. Uh, and then with what's left, we see what we can do. Uh, let's see. This is a five. Now, <laughs> unlike what you're probably thinking, the SS units here are not elite. They're not elite by and large. They're just regular guys. There were two Panzer divisions here at uh, Arnhem, and the 9th and 10th SS Panzer, and they were they were down to each about 30% strength. So they had been, you know, gotten the the blazes beaten beaten out of them in earlier campaigns. They were refitting here, uh, and you know most would probably say they're combat ineffective, but they're doing well to be considered standard units uh, uh, because. You know, they're not, with the replacements they're getting, they're probably not elite anymore. Uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and, and, and do something here. Let's pop him there. Ooh, let's see. We only got how many? We got one guy left. Oh, joyful. So that's here. I think we had a scattered in this. So this, 
This is going to go over here, I assume. Uh, that's 6 on 5. All right, 6 on 5. It's not outstanding. But we are elite, and he's not. That would be a 2 to 1. And what we can do is pop the artillery off, get a 3 to 1, and see what's possible. Who knows? Maybe we'll force him to retreat. Maybe we'll do damage. We're going to do 3 to 1 on this guy. Uh, and see what the deal is. 3 to 1. 4. Okay, 3 to 1 with a 4. That's defend or retreat. Okay, that's an interesting result. Uh, no immediate hits, but that means he's going to have to leave. And if he leaves, uh, he is going to, he's going to die because he's got, he's got Zock bonds in front of him here. He can't go there. Zock bond here. Zock bond here. He can't retreat two hexes through zones of control. That's the only way he can go. And that isn't going to do it for him. So if he retreats, he dies. Uh, all right, so he's going to do a determined defense. Uh, if you've played Normandy 44, that's pretty much the same deal as that. Uh, modifier is slightly different, but it's really the same idea. Uh, so he is in an other hex, and, uh, and he's not elite. He's not low quality. Uh, there's no defensive artillery support, so it's going to be a four or better. It's a 50-50 shot whether he's going to stay here. Uh, all right, let's see what it is. Six. All right. That's good for Mr. SS because that means no further losses and the retreat is canceled. So he's still there. He doesn't even take a step loss. He could have, he could have been dead. So this is a very good result for the Kampfgruf craft. All right, that's the turn one. I did the movement. I did the combat uh, for the airborne. Uh, the last part is the 30th core. I'm going to set that up and come back and we will have shown you the, all the combats for turn one with the allies. Okay, here's the attack of the 30th core. Now, a couple things. Uh, the first turn of the game is automatic clear. It's the PM turn of September 17. Uh, on clear weather turns, the uh, allies get two Fighter bomber units that can be used to, uh, to get one shift on the odds table. Those, the ta those can only be used uh, in the general vicinity of the, uh, the non-airborne units. So they can't go over and help the guys in Arnhem, but they certainly can help 30 Corps. Uh, the second thing is that there's two artillery units back here, and they both have fired. Okay, And on the first turn, they give two shifts each instead of one shift, which would be normal. So... Uh, we, what we've been able to do is to get some respectable odds. I think you got a choice. You can go for huge odds on the guy on the road or really nice odds and then sp uh, share the love a little bit to these other two guys. Um, there wasn't much movement. The, the Germans have Zock bonds just all up and down that whole line. So there's really not much moving around for these guys on turn one. They got to poke a hole. So uh, let's start with this one right down the middle. We got two tank units. Okay. Uh, nine and an eight, okay. Uh, the super skip super script three has to do with the how powerful the armor is, uh, but that doesn't matter because the defender's not armored. So when you have a, an attacker with armor and again a defender with no armor, that's going to be an odd shift. Uh, we have seventeen on attack. We have five on defense. That's three to one. We get an armor shift, or we get a we get an upward shift for the armor. That's four to one, and we threw in a fighter bomber. That's where we get our five to one from. So let's see what it does. Roll the die. We get a three on the five to one table. A one D one. Okay, uh, I think we had an exchange earlier, and there's a, the difference between A one and D one is is interesting uh, on the exchange result the opponent gets to uh, pick the loss of the other side so he can cherry pick the good stuff uh, with the a1 d1 you get to pick your own loss so you can pick you can lose the crap or at least the stuff that's less good uh, in this case there's just two good tank units there and one of them is going to take a hit uh, the second difference between exchange and a1d1 is that the defender has to retreat with an a1d1 he does not have to retreat with an exchange an exchange is all it is each side takes a loss and it's done here with this defender the only guy here he's taking a loss and let's say oh we like our big nine 
our nine banger. We like him. So let's go, let's go ahead and weaken this eight unit down to a six. And that's that. All right. Now we have a one, we have a unit there. We could roll for determined defense, but there's a fair chance that we're going to lose a step and we're just going to obliterate that guy. So I'm saying that in the grand scheme of things, it's time to boogie. It's time to get out of here. So this guy, this guy is going to go down the road. Let's go down the road. Two hexes. Boom, boom. Okay. Uh, because he went down the road, because he retreated, he's going to get a disruption result. Whenever you retreat, you get a disruption result. So he's got that. That's going to limit him to tactical move and his move, but he's in trouble. <laughs> he's he's not going anywhere, I don't think. Okay, we used we used the plane up. Next, we got a four to one here. Let's see, how did we get that? Uh, we got two infantry units here attacking. We got a five and another five. Now these are mechanized uh, because, well, that's just what they are, but they are not vehicles. Uh, if you look in the book, there's a nice little table and it has it slices and dices things in different ways. And basically what this one's going to come down, he is, he is mechanized, but not vehicle. And on the combat results table, you see that in Poulter, which is where this is, where he is sitting, uh, vehicle units can't go there. Movement is prohibited. So if he was a tank, he couldn't go there because he would sink. Uh, so, but he can go there and it says, uh, uh, Vehicle units have attacking into or out of. Okay. I mean, he could be on a road. That would allow him to go in there, but there's no road in this hex. Uh, all right. So we got basically 10 points. Now there is a minor river here. What does that do? Well, the minor river, it, uh, it, 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 see, vehicle units have when attacking across. Okay, good. There's no vehicle units. Defenders doubled if all attackers are attacking across. Okay. Well, all attackers are attacking across. So he's a 10. And these guys are unmodified. They're a 10. Uh, because they're, they're in Poulter, only vehicle units are effective. They're mechanized, but they're not vehicles, so they're unaffected. So it's going to be 10 points on attack and 10 points on defense. How did we get to 4 to 1? We used one of our magic artillery units that upped it to 3 to 1. We used a plane that made it 4 to 1. Okay, 4 to 1. Let's see what's going on. Oh, bad news. Exchange. It rolled a 1. So, we already kind of covered exchanges. That means each guy gets to choose the other guy's poison. Both sides take a hit. He takes a hit. He takes a hit. No retreat is needed. It's done. Okay? It's done on that exchange. So, that's it. And now we got a five to one. Okay, what did we do to get that? Well, he's a crappy unit for starters. We've got two guards infantry units, mechanized. That's 11 points. There's no deduction for being in the polter. He's not going over a river or anything. So we got 11 to four. That's uh, two to one. Always a point short. In my world, you're always a point short. That's two to one. Artillery, that's four to one. And he's a low quality unit, five to one. All right, rolling on five to one. Let's see what we do. Six. Well, that's better. That's more like it. DS. Okay, we had one of those before, except the guy died on us. What does DS do here? Defender shattered. Defender loses one step. Okay. Oh, by the way, in this game, it's kind of nice. That two means he's got two steps. That's simple. So we know he's going to flip. Bump. And he's not dead. Okay. What happens next? We're not done. Uh, surviving defenders must retreat two or three hexes. Uh, and they are marked in full retreat. That is something that's uh, basically it's like a double dose of, of disruption. Okay, so what we do, is he going to retreat two or three? He's not going to even try to hang around here. He's a low quality unit. He will, he will not survive if he tries to hang around. So let's do the three. One, two, three. Just get him the heck back there. Put him in full retreat. Uh, but we're not done yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is DS. Okay. Uh, the attacker receives bonus advance and may conduct breakthrough combat. All right. So means that we're going to get to advance a couple hexes. If we were on a road, we could go three. Uh, in this case, I don't think we want to do any more attacking. Uh, we're going to have better chances later when we can have the whole gang 
uh, in on it with shifts and, you know, for artillery and stuff. So I think we're just going to go, let's start hemming those guys in, making them feel real uneasy. And let's say he goes two down this way. Remember in this game, uh, your advances do not have to enter into the vacated hex as the first hex you go into. You can go anywhere. Uh, you stop when you hit a Zoc, but aside from that, you can go anywhere. Uh, and you can't go through Zoc bonds. Never go through Doc Zoc bonds. Okay, that is the first turn of attacks for the Allies. Uh, there is a recovery phase. That's where we pick up all these scattered markers and stuff. All the markers come up. I don't think I need to show you that. Supply phase. Well, everybody's in supplies. I don't want to. I don't want to go too deep into that, uh, for, at least for today. And so the Allied turn for turn one is now done. All right, I kind of fibbed. I forgot about two more attacks that uh, are actually important attacks. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Uh, here's the Grav River Bridge. If you remember, we decided not to reveal that immediately. We concentrated our strength, and now we're going to go for it. Uh, also remember that the Grav River Bridge may not be blown on turn one, which is why this guy did not roll for bridge destruction when all these guys showed up at their doorstep. All right, let's see who he is. All right, he's a one-banger, a one-point guy. All right, Mr. One Banger, what are we going to do to you? Well, we got, we've got, let's see, we got some elite airborne here. I'm elite and you're not. So we got four, eight. They're going to be halved attacking over that river. Uh, they're only halved. They could be worse. They would have to be doing a bridge assault, a river assault, if there wasn't a bridge there. But good news, there is a bridge. So those, the, uh, the four halves to two, the other four halves to a two, that's four. Uh, the one is makes it five points on the attack. Now, it's actually doing more than that. If you didn't have that guy there attacking from the other side of the bridge, the defender would be doubled. So uh, if you had a stronger unit there, that could be very inconvenient. As it is with a one-point unit, and now he's not doubled, you've got five points on the attack. Four from here, one from there, five to one. No modifier. Oh, yeah, one, one modifier. We've got elite units, and they're not. So uh, we got... Six to one on this one. Uh, it's looking pretty good for capturing the Grav River Bridge. A six. Kabawi. Kabawi. It's done. He's out of here. All right. So we're going to uh, mark this bridge as captured. Captured. And that's a really, really good thing. Okay. We're going to, let's say we want to advance him into the city we're going to advance one guy over there we're we we've, we've got that bridge locked down okay that's a good thing so uh that's good all right okay we are now done with the allies uh and i just want to point these are reinforcements for the germans and if you look in the upper right hand corner you see one f and one g basically the one is the turn of entry so turn one but the f and g are what i want you to see those are the uh, reinforcement zones that these guys are going to enter in. Remember, there's all these lettered zones all around the map, and this is telling us one's going into zone F and one's going into zone G. So let's see where that is. Well, guess what? It is by Arnhem. Surprise, surprise. So we're going to put this guy in G where he belongs and this guy in F where he belongs. Uh... The first turn, or the first phase is artillery resupply, but we don't have to deal with that. Bridges. Uh, do we have any bridge activity that needs to happen? All right, we're in the German bridge phase of, uh, of turn one. Now, remember, we were blowing bridges when Allied units were walking up next to them in the Allied part of the turn. That's one way the bridges get blown. The second way bridges get blown is in the German bridge phase. Basically, if they have a unit next to the bridge and there's an allied unit within one hex of the bridge, they get to do a, a, a destruction roll. And if you see right here, that's, that's exactly what's going on. We got, we're got we sitting next to the bridge. It could have been either, either side. This guy is sitting, he's sitting uh, uh, one hex away from the bridge. We get the roll. Now, if the rule says maybe you may do it, it does not say you must do it. Remember, turn one, there's a, a minus one on this roll. So maybe they should, Germans should wait till next turn. It's a crap unit defending. I think we're going to roll it and con ourselves happy that we get the chance. So here goes. Three. Well, we, we got what we got. Uh, the bridge is, the bridge 
attempt to the attempt to blow the bridge has failed so what that means it is it is basically got to be rewired for demolition that would happen before you can try to blow it again it's not captured but it's also uh can't be blown right now now i use these counters to show that uh this is basically saying okay that 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 bridge is intact it's in german hands but uh, uh, it, the, the explosive, the attempt to blow the bridge has failed. Therefore, the, the bridge needs to be rewired before you can try again to blow it up. Okay. Uh, I think that's about all there is for bridge demolition. Uh, let's see. They have no air troops. Stop. We're up to German movement phase. And I think uh, the German moves are a whole lot easier than the Allies. There's nothing tricky going on. It's counting out hexes and say by 30 core, you're trying to get the heck out of there. Uh, and uh, there's not much going on. Remember, the Germans can only move tactical movement on the first move, one or two hexes. So it's given that I'm just going to move the Germans, come back and let you uh, show you what the deal is back in a minute. Okay, here's uh, the results after the movement, uh, German movement for turn one. Uh, I guess things of interest. Basically, it's a general retreat. They're pulling away from 30 core, getting the heck out of here, because uh, they're, otherwise they're just going to end up getting surrounded and having all kind of bad things happen. Uh, interesting down here is that we had a guy just boogie off the map. He, he was within the two hexes. Remember, they only get two hexes a move in turn one. He was able to get off the map. This guy's kind of hanging out to dry, but maybe he can sneak off the map next time. We'll see. Uh, the guy, we have a, the guy in full retreat. He's Kind of, he just kind of remember he only gets two hexes this turn, but uh, uh, he took his two and he moved his way where he could. And we're kind of concentrating what forces we have here. That disruption is going to go away at the end of the German move, so that's going to be gone. Hopefully, we have enough uh, interfering so no one gets behind these guys. The rest of these guys just go back their two hexes and hope that uh, hope for better days ahead. Um, down here with the 101st, uh, we've got, we've got, uh, well, we, we just kind of started forming a line. We have a Zock bond here. Remember, uh, remember your Zock bonds, that hex side between these two units that have at least two st uh, steps each. That's new in this game. I don't think that's in the Normandy 44. And the other guys just kind of form their Zock bonds over here. No Zock bond here, but there are zones of control. Uh, relying on this question mark unit to be somebody, we have no idea. Some minor movements down here, not much. Uh, nothing much down here, uh, and and we just kind of uh, crap is is squirting out here. He did a. This is not a Zakban in this direction, so he was able to do a one hex move to try to extricate himself. Uh, we'll see how successful he'll be next turn. I'm thinking he's going to live at this point. So he had his chance to die, and he didn't do it. So again, I don't know why uh, why the, Mark decided to put in that non-rule rule about, uh, well, you get to put a question mark unit over there so that the, you can't surround him and make him die. Because he didn't die, and he doesn't die all the time. So I don't know. It's just my opinion. I think it's not needed. It's It was fine the way it was it was done the first time. Uh, the only other thing, I think I forgot to roll these onesie twosie guys. These random entry, are they going to come in? Are the thousand tanks in the forest going to show up and, and mess up the 82nd? Well, let me find out. I'm going to roll the ones and twos. I'll put the units down and uh, and I'll let you know what happens in a sec. Okay, we had two units show up and you see here's the Here's the, the fearsome forest with the thousand tanks hiding in it, and we had a couple crap infantry units show up, and guess what? That's about all that can show up there for quite some time. Eventually, a few real guys show up, but that ain't for a while. Uh, so, uh, no big threat there. Just, uh, just a few guys showing up, and that's it. All right, that's the German move for turn one. Uh, there is no combat. Uh, recovery phase, that's where all the markers come up. Supply phase. Actually, I think everybody is in supply, including Conf Group Crop, because he he can he can trace supply through one zone of control, not a Zakban, but a zone of control. And uh, what we have here is here's Conf Group Crop. Here's a zone of control. 
Here's nothing. So he's going through one zone of control at it. He's in supply. Um, all right. So no supply problems. The last thing is traffic markers. This is a German only phase. And it's kind of a neat rule to, again, slow the allies down. Uh, what it is, you get to put these, these uh, traffic markers down that could cost two extra movement points to enter. Uh, you can only put them as far as the mechanized units have advanced uh, down 30 core away. So we're going over here, and you can't put them next to each other. Aside from that, you have options. So let's get some light, and let's see what we can do here. All right. All right, there we go. Uh, so again, here's the here's the advance of the mech unit. So let's just you can't go with them, but you can go there. You can go every other hex. We're gonna go there, and when guys enter, they can go there. Okay. Uh, next thing that happens is that you roll two dice, and if you see the numbers on those counters, if I get a match, it picks up and goes into this box that'll where it can come out and play next turn. So let's see what I roll. Two ones. All right, that's good. I rolled doubles. That means that only the number one comes up, and he goes into the magic box, and is gone. Uh, he's not going to be on the map for turn two. Uh, there are, I want to say, six of these units. He, he's going to continue to get one more every turn until he has all six in. He starts the game with three, and one went away, so he's got two for next turn. We are now done with turn one, and what I'd like to do is simply to summarize kind of the, uh, the action and where, where the campaign would sit based on the, how, how well things got started. Um, if we look over by 30 core, I think, uh, as, as expected, the, uh, the Allies have punched a hole down the road. They're going to be able to advance next turn. Uh, but the Germans have pretty much fell back in good order. They took some losses, but that is to be expected. Uh, we have probably our biggest challenges over on this side of, uh, this side of the core boundary. It, it just kind of is what it is. Uh, these guys are going to get uh, shushed, shushed back, and that's unavoidable. So right now, they haven't really taken much in the way of losses. They're in, the Germans are in decent shape, as long as this guy makes it off the map. Um, in the middle, uh, the Germans have fallen back with losses, but they have made a strong point here on the road. They're set up to, to uh, accept the next round that, that's going to come at them. Uh, and everywhere else, they kind of retreated in good order. So the Germans are not in bad shape uh, in this area. As we go over to Eindhoven, no one has done anything with Eindhoven yet, and that's uh, normal for turn one. Uh, the Allies have actually, well, they didn't get the Sun River Bridge. They did get a reasonable alternative. So they do have a... With a slight detour, they are got, they've got Hell's Highway, the supply line to Arnhem. Going to go this way, going to come back, and then it rejoins the main route again. And eventually they will get to repair this bridge as, uh, as 30th Corps gets its assets up there. Um, and so they have, they have, a, they have a, a road to follow now with the bridges in hand all the way down here. And they've captured the Grav River Bridge, so that is very good news. Uh, we're good all the way up to this Maswal Canal. And right now, that's a question mark. And actually, one small correction I see is that uh, I put an under construction marker here instead of a bridge blown marker. So let's fix that right here. Um, so the, the issue is that uh, we've already lost two bridges here. There is a railroad bridge over here that's possible. Oh, no, I, I take that back. This is the railroad bridge blown. Take that back. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four bridges left. Now we're paying a price uh, for that uh, uh, unit. The unit, remember, if you remember, one of the two units over here got scattered. Uh, and we moved him a two move. He, he only could do a tactical move as a scattered unit. So he was able to roll for this bridge and only that bridge. Okay. Uh, what could have happened if everybody came down in good order, he could have moved five hexes. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. We could have gotten one, two, three, four bridges rolled for. Four bridges rolled for. And each one of them would be getting the modifier, the beneficial modifier for a turn one check. 
each one of them would have been a 50-50. As it stands, we had one shot at a 50-50, and these three are now going to be facing one chance in three instead of one chance in two to get a successful uh, uh, capture roll on the, on the bridge. Um, it is what it is. It's the price for having a suboptimal drop. Uh, so we focused on taking the prime objective, which was uh, the Grab River Bridge, but the secondary objective was not really achieved. We still don't have a bridge over this canal, which in the long run could be a problem. Uh, we've just started to work our way over to Nijmegen. Uh, nothing going on there yet. We just kicked out one question mark unit. Uh, and certainly there's not enough there to push through, that's for sure. That is pretty much what they did in, in, the, in the history. They just sent one guy over there and it took a while to get some more. There's just not enough units there at the start to do a whole lot more than that. Uh, the British have protected their drop zone, although this guy could be a problem because he is putting his zone of control over the drop zone for turn three when the next batch of guys comes in. They can come in with that guy there, but there will be modifiers. There will be modifiers that come into play. Uh, so maybe we can kick him out on turn two. We'll see. Uh, over here, we're set up for Colonel Frost to make his run for the bridge. Uh, remember with the infiltration rules, there's no zone of control going into the city. So he can run right through there and uh, he can go ahead and, uh, and, get to the, and get to the bridge. With that, I'm going to go ahead and call it a wrap for this session. Uh, if you're still with me, I thank you. Again, this is, this is my first my first experience uh, recording for, for YouTube or, any, or anywhere else for that matter. So I just appreciate it if you stick with me. I appreciate all kind comments and encouragement. And if you care to subscribe, that would be a high honor. I appreciate it and, and thank you very much. And we'll be putting up a turn to in the not, not too distant future. Thank you much. Bye-bye.